On problem number 11, we have a student with a two student jobs. The student earns $13 per hour for tutoring and $5 per hour as a teacher's aide. Let X be the number of hours each week spent tutoring and Y is the number of hours each week spent as a teacher's aide. So they want me to complete parts A through E. Last time we started this, we got some of the parts done. Part A, write the objective function that describes total weekly earnings. Our author of this book uses Z for the objective function. And Z, this objective function is is a function that represents the total amount of money the student earns in one week. So I will write that total amount the student earns in one week. Student gets $13 for each hour of tutoring. The student tutors X number of hours, so the money from tutoring is 13 times X. The student gets $5 per hour for each hour as a teacher's aide. The student works Y hours as teacher's aide, so plus 5Y for the teacher's aide, and the objective function is 13X plus 5Y. Part B deals with there are some constraints. Student has to have time for their studies. In order for the student to have time for the studies, student can work no more than 19 hours a week. Well, the student works X hours tutoring, Y hours as a teacher's aide. So we add those two together to get the total number of hours worked X plus Y must be less than or equal to 19. Student can work less than 19, but cannot work more than 19. Student can work equal to 19. Well, the tutoring center has some requirements. They require that each tutor spend at least four hours per week tutoring. X is the number of hours tutoring. X is greater than or equal to four. The tutoring center also has a maximum requirement. Student cannot tutor more than eight hours, so X must be less than or equal to eight. For part C, we have to graph the inequalities that we have gotten in part B. For this, we'll graph X plus Y equals 19, and then we have to figure out what side of the line to shade on. It's going to be below the line because that represents less than or equal to 19. Let's do the intercepts, the x-intercept, y equals 0. So x plus 0 equals 19. x will be 19. That gives me the pair 19 comma 0. At that point, I sort of put that in my back pocket till I need it. Let's do the y-intercept. For this, x equals 0. We're going to do 0 plus y equals 19. That's going to give us y equals 19. The pair is 0, 19. So for the first line, I would select the line tool on the computer and click it at 19 on the y-axis for the y-intercept and 19 on the x-axis for the x-intercept. That's going to go ahead and put in this, this line for you.
Student cannot work a negative number of hours. So we're only dealing with the first quadrant. And if I remember correctly, the computer only has you working in the first quadrant right there. The second constraint is x is greater than or equal to 4. So we need to graph x equals 4. We'll select the line tool. That's a vertical line through 4 on the x-axis. I'll click it at 4 comma 0. Click one more where the x value is 4. Doesn't matter what the y value is. That'll put in this line for you. And then for the second constraint, or the last constraint about the tutoring, x, we're going to graph x equals 8. That's a vertical line. I'll select the line tool, click it at 8 on the x-axis, click another point where the x value is 8 and the y value doesn't matter. That'll put in this vertical line. Then you have to dump the paint. For the shading, I would get stuff like this. For x plus y is less than or equal to 19, that's going to shade below the line, the first one that I put in. For x greater than or equal to 4, that will shade to the right of the line x equals 4. And then for x is less than or equal to 8, that shades to the left of the line x equals 8. Where you want to dump the paint is where those three colors overlap. And on this problem, it's going to be this little region, this little sliver, that's where you're going to dump the paint. 